guts out some hotel room in London? Wait a minute. It's all starting to come back to me. Starts out in sunny Los Angeles, California. One very weird place, man. The city of angels is really filled with anything but. Everyone here seems to be chasing after someone or something. Yeah, the boulevard of broken hearts was truly littered with broken dreams. And I should know, I grew up here. A few years ago, I was just a singer in my high school band, The Crossfires. But soon, we changed our name to the Turtles. I decided to put college on hold and groove on a full-time basis. We scored some big hit records, like It Ain't Me, Babe, You Baby, and Let Me Be. See, there I am, Howard Kalen, and the rest of my band, the Turtles. Johnny, Mark, Tucko, Ponzi, Al. We just hit the jackpot. Our new single, Happy Together, was the number one record in the country. And Teen Set Magazine even hinted that we might make the cover. Are you trying to tell me the Beatles did a photo layout for this magazine? Yeah, man, I saw that. Well, holy cow, why didn't you say so? Henry, let's start clicking, man. Uh, hey, Henry, how much longer? Now, these are very dangerous young men that's coming out here. Don't even talk to them. Don't, don't talk to them. Don't look at them. Don't look them in the eye. You didn't start without me? So, uh, listen, I hear you know the Beatles. Is John Lennon cool or what? Lennon is very cool. Wow, I can't believe it. I'm actually talking to somebody who loves John Lennon. He still puts his pants on one leg at a time. I had a know. Wow. Hey, yeah, uh, Henry, you ready to roll? I've got cocktails at Musso's in half an hour. Yes, yes, yes. Please enjoy some of these brownies my old lady made. Organic, of course. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Not too many now. They're strong. I like to use the brownies on photo shoots. No. Red eyes. 
<laughs> These are good. Right on. Okay, so here's what I want to do. We're going to shoot you one at a time while I get a little background info on tape. Sound all right? Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Nine on the pine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the... Me? You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, age before beauty, fat ass. Shh. Hey, move it out. <laughs> okay. Big smile. Bigger, bigger, too big. Mark, you're such a dick brain. Fellas, let's keep it clean. Remember, our reader's average age is 13. <laughs> That's even too young for you, Al. What? Um, my name is my name is Mark Bowman, and um, I'm the first uh, first quarterback valedictorian in Westchester High School history to win a Nobel Prize. And I'm a big fat liar. Yeah, he may be fat, but he's hung like a chihuahua. <laughs> hey, hey, man, you hang five in my nose, and I'll hang ten in your face. What does that mean? Hi, I'm uh, Jim Pons, a bass player, 24 years old. I guess that makes me the elder statesman of the band. I guess I'm more of a, a philosopher than anything else. I, I see things in terms of their pure essence. What a load. <laughs> it sounds like the brownie talking. Brownie! I'm Johnny Barbada. I'm a Capricorn. I'm the drummer. Look in the camera smile, Johnny boy. You're a bad boy. Sure. Dangerous man. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Give him that knowing acid look. <laughs> <laughs> See how the other guys in the band dress? You know, I keep telling them to dress for success, but they're just a bunch of hippies. Show a little class. Hi, I'm Al Nickel. I'm 21. Both of my parents are professors at USC, so I guess that puts a little pressure on me, I guess, to get my life in order. You are such a gorf, Al. Wait, as I was saying, there would be no turtles without me. <laughs> madman, madman, guitar madman. Happy Al, face. Tape's still rolling. Oh, um. I'm married with a kid, so <laughs> sorry, girls. <laughs> I'm Jim Tucker. Hey, Tucker! I play guitar also. I'm a rhythm player, so you don't really get to hear me much. Though John Lennon's a rhythm guitar player, too, so I guess that's uh, all right. Just a Midwest guy who started messing with music because the chicks dig it. You've been called America's Hollies. Any comments? I guess that's cool. Uh, they're English. <laughs> the chicks really dig them. My name is Howard Kalen, and I'm the singer. Hey, what about us? Okay, I'm, I'm one of the singers in the band. We all sing. I'm 19 years old. Don't let the gray hair fool you. You guys must be really excited. I hear you're going to England for the first time. That's right. I'm going to introduce Ice Vitamins to England. Come again? Well, have you ever tried to get a cold drink in England? No, because they don't put ice in their drinks the way we do here. Warm sodas, warm beef. There's something in our eyes. Look at their teeth. Look at our teeth. No ice. No ice vitamins. It's a wrap, Henry. Hey, Sue, you want a brownie for the road? No, thanks, Henry. I'll see you later. Hey, so do you think that we, um, we might be on the cover? <laughs> Not likely. Look, Ooh. you're perfectly sweet, and I'm sure you're all really talented. It, it's just that... It's just what, lady? What, we ain't pretty enough? Like Mark Lindsay or those Herman's Hermits guys? Is that it? All right, look, it's true. Your faces won't sell magazines. Oh. I'm sorry. But I still really like you guys, and I hope your looks don't hold you back. Okay? Thanks. I told you guys to dress up shit. You just cost me a cover. We're on in three and two and... Hey there! That's the sound of the day, and it belongs to one of the most fast-moving groups in the country, the Turtles. Imagine me and you, I do I think about you day and night It's only right to think about the girl you love And hold her tight, so happy together If I should call you up, invest a dime And you say you belong to me, so lose my mind Imagine how the world could be So very fine, so happy together together was the hit single that every young band dreamed about. An upbeat signature tune that would last for generations. 
We shot straight up the Billboard Top 100 and sold out big shows everywhere we went. The rush was out of sight. Suddenly, bam, that was my voice on the radio, man, and my band on Ed Sullivan between Johnny Mathis and Analex Chips. It was all so heavy. Imagine me, that potato of a guy in high school with chicks banging down my door for autographs and sometimes even more. We had been together for only a few short years, and already we had agents and managers, accountants and girlfriends. We had recorded a rock classic, and we were living the dream. Me and you, and you and me, no matter how they toss the dice, it had to be. The only one for me is you, and you for me, so happy together. The dice, it had to be The only one for me is you And you for me So happy together So happy together And how is the weather So happy together We're happy together were turning into like this wild happening and we were really digging it i got caught up in the excitement and somehow before i knew it i had even asked my girlfriend to marry me well ha, sort of we finally have a few minutes alone together oh, yeah. mm. i'm gonna miss you and i'm gonna miss your long beautiful hair listen honey I know you had a lot on your mind lately, but before I go back to New York, I've got to know... Well, we've never really talked about our future. Our what? I want us to have a home. A real home, not an apartment. With a fireplace. Maybe a pool. Pools are nice. And a yard. With a white picket fence. Mm. You know, the whole leave it to beaver thing. Well, I like leave it to beaver. Yeah? And children? Wouldn't children be nice? Children would be nice someday. Someday, yeah, very nice. All right, then. Huh? My answer is yes. The answer was yes? What was the question? I will marry you. Can't wait to tell my mother about this. We can get my ring in New York. I know just the one I want. My mother and I picked it out together. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's go show. Whoa. Mm. Uh. Guess I should have knocked. <laughs> Guess what, Phil? What? Howard and I are getting married. <laughs> <laughs> really? Seriously. Guess so. Well. I guess congratulations are in order. Yes. What are you, both 19 years old? I haven't really thought about it like that. Right, 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 right. Right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. There you go. There you go. Son. Yes, Bill? You're a fucking idiot, okay? I could hardly believe it myself. It was only a year ago that we were the opening act for, like, every band that played the Sunset Strip. The strip was electric was where it all went down. A groovy musical party where the clubs were open all night. So were the chicks. We finally caught our first big break, and now other bands were opening for us. Us, the Turtles, headlining band at the world-famous Whiskey A Go-Go. It's the Whiskey Baby.
whiskey, baby. <laughs> How about that opening band? Yeah. Talk about your hip opening ass. <laughs> doors, man. They are great. Jim Morrison's cool. Nice guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see that little Pamela Miller girl dance. Yeah, the one with the see-through glass. Yeah, what is she, like 15? Man, how did she even get into this place? She's got a see-through blouse. Good point. Hey, Johnny, when we play you destruction, not so fast next time, okay? Why not? This is the whiskey. They want to dance. Yeah, but it's a protest song. You're not supposed to dance to a protest song. <laughs> well, he's supposed to do March? <laughs> Take it easy, man. <laughs> These are my stage clothes. What, you're wearing that? Those kids paid money to see someone who cares. Oh, I care, man. Just not about my clothes. I mean, I sing, man. Yeah, see? That makes you a Rolling Stones person. I beg your pardon? There are Beatles people, and there are Stones people. Beatles people, they comb their hair, they wear suits. They look good. Hey, you guys think I look beatle enough? And then the Stones people... Which would be me? Yes, and Mark. You see, I don't think you guys would feel too comfortable wearing nice clothes. Sorry. Man, where has your mind gone, man? I'm from the Turtles, from the group The Turtles. Maybe you've heard some of our songs. Um, it ain't me, babe. Outside chance, come on. Um, anyway, we've... Uh, We've played with everyone on the strip. We've played with the mamas and the papas. We've played with Frank Zappa. We've played with... We've played with love. Love? Oh, you wow. did love, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, Arthur Lee, man, that guy is one crazy cat. I am telling you. Wow. See, I'm the guitar player for the Turtles, and I'm the only one who knows how to read music. So I do a lot of the arrangements, and I tell the other guys what to play most of the time. I'm also married with a kid, so it's like, it's, it's a lot of pressure, I and mean, you can imagine what I'm going through. If I wasn't married, you know, maybe, maybe things could be different, but I am, you know, I, I'm married. Right. Look, maybe I could have your number, you know, maybe, I, maybe you could just give me your number, because I'm a married man, you know, but I'm not dead, as the saying goes. <laughs> I don't... Could you just, could you give me your number? Cause, cause... I don't speak some English. <laughs> what? Bish, nishto ne razbiram od tva koja tu mi kaže, no ako iskaš može da spinu zaj. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I gotta go on now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. We got a great house out there, boys. Elmer and Mario are very excited. We got loads of record people, DJ people, the press is out, the guy from the from the Times, what's his name? Celebrities out the wazoo. You surprised with a few hit records. Woo! <laughs> whiskey, baby. Come on, Taco. Let's hit him. That's good for the turtle. You can try to please me, but it won't be easy. Surprised that you even found me And you don't stand an outside chance You don't stand an outside chance But you can try Whatever you do, girl You know you can't get through, girl But you know me as well, forget me Cause my heart is stone You better leave me alone, yeah You can try to please me But it won't be easy Stone walls surround me I'm surprised 
After a gig, everyone would head down to Canners. It was a great place to eat. Hell, at that hour, it was the only place to eat. Funny movie. I'm just saying that the Russians are coming as escape is drivel, that's all. Government's trying to keep our minds off the real issues. So you're saying the government tells Hollywood what to do? Honestly, Cass, you are so naive. More damn hippies. This place used to be respectable. Hey, 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 check this out, man. The, the Times loves us. Listen to this. The Turtles, a singing sextet whose popularity has grown from three hit records. It ain't me, babe. Let Me Be and You, Baby, are working at Whiskey A Go-Go through Saturday. Their act is a polished, polished collection, collection of up-tempo, up frenzied songs. Let me see that. <laughs> Most rock and roll groups since their meter is big beat music. Hey, what does meter mean? Uh, media. It's like their, their bag. Ooh, media. It's Japanese. <laughs> Most bands have lackluster drummer here. Check. This is the good part right here. But the Turtles are blessed with John Barbada, a stick-twirling professional. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Right, right here. Do you hear that? Professional, baby. All right, let's check this out. The two non-playing members whack tambourines, which they also use to amuse the audience. <laughs> here, here, here. An enthusiastic crowd at the Whiskey A Go Go crowded the dance floor and were generous in applauding the sing. Uh, Whoa, oh, Jesus! Jesus. <laughs> hey, Howard. <laughs> What you eating? We just sat down. You want to order something? Yeah, maybe. You want a drink? Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm cool, man. Hey, what you reading there, Marky? Nothing. I'm not reading anything. Marky. Come on. Let's read about that, man. You got the time for you? Hey. Actually, I hadn't really gotten that far. Oh. Sharing the bill are the doors. A hungry looking quartet with an interesting original sound, but with the worst stage appearance of any rock and roll group in captivity. What do they know, man? Come on. Their lead singer emotes with his eyes closed. Their their uh, electric pianist hunches over his instrument as if reading mysteries from the keyboard. The guitarist drifts around the stage randomly, and the drummer seems lost in another world. Hey, maybe they just don't get it, man. Yeah. By, the, by the time this guy from the Times gets it, I'll be dead and buried, man. Yeah, it's all right, no big deal, you know? Actually, you know, it's pretty good, pretty good, pretty neat. Darling, uh... Could you be an angel and ask that boy if he's going to eat his pickle? <laughs> that boy? I hate to see a good bill sitting out in the light like that. They get limp, you know? Mm. <laughs> um, you're going to eat your pickle? Um, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Mm. You should live and be well. Hey, man, I got my draft on this today. Yeah, me too. Oh, man. You know what? Shit, just rip them up, man, because this ain't your war, brother. Peace, man. Right? And as for me, I'm going to go see if I can't find the little boy's room. And... 
drain my lizard. All right, man. All right. <clears throat> you order me a Reuben? OK, I'll be right back. I'm going to go check out Zappa's table. You going to lick the plate, too, or what? Next, you'll be off watching Bob Hope and Phyllis Diller. I thought you were from the village. I'm very hip. Do you know about that new film that someone just made? It's butts for like two hours, asses for two hours. What's that all about? Yeah, I know. It's Yoko something. It's kind of weird. Huh. Weird? He's talking about me? Weird? Not too paranoid, <laughs> are you? You're actually just talking about the movies. People think I'm the strange one. Hey, why the long face, turtle? I got my draft notice today. Oh, Jesus, man. I'm so sorry. That stinks. Plus, would you want to see this guy in the jungle with a gun? <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. What do you want? Um, All right. Yeah, I need a rubid. Uh, didn't you already eat? I haven't eaten since dinner. <laughs> You'd be so cute if you cut your hair. You know, I know people in Canada. You could, like, flee the country and live underground for a while. Listen, just tell them that you object to their politics. That's all. It's not the politics, man. I'm scared. I'll pray for you, man. All right, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm splitting. I'll see you later. Wait. I've had an epiphany. What? The answer was right under our nose. <laughs> you could get a lot of answers under your nose. <laughs> nose jokes, huh? OK. Hey, have you seen our review? Oh, oh, yeah. I don't need to read your review. I know who you are. I have all yeah. your LPs. <laughs> Little surfer uh, girl, help uh, me, Rhonda. Uh, help me, Luella. Luella, uh, you need to write a song yeah, about actually, Luella. Uh, Lu but, um, yeah, we're we're not, not the beach. We're the we're the, we're the, we're the turtles. Yeah, we we, we play the our turtles. Instruments. There's only one man that can save you from your ignominious fate. The Green Lantern. S Sergeant Bilko. <laughs> no. <laughs> My manager, Herb Cohen. My cousin, Herb? Herb's an extraordinary man, and listen. <clears throat> I've had a lot of guys come to me with their draft notices, and I swear, Herb's gotten every one of them off. Herb Cohen. He is the answer to all of your so-called prayers. Come on, Billy. Herb, come on. So I was off to Venice Beach to meet with my distant cousin, Herb Cohen, legendary artist, manager, entrepreneur, and well-known rock and roll eccentric in hopes that somehow he could help me with my dilemma. Do you have any idea how long it's been since I felt it necessary to have a meeting on the beach? I'm sorry. I really, I really am. It's just I didn't know what else to do, and I'm kind of freaking out. I'm going to help you. And not just because we're related. It's part of my contribution to the war effort. Got to keep drug-crazed hippie freaks from crippling our glorious militia. You know, Mom used to warn me to stay away from you. I always thought you were the black sheep of the family, you know, this sort of beatnik guy who used to hang out with Lenny Bruce and a bunch of drugged-out weirdos. And your point is? I need your help. No, I don't. I don't want to get a crew cut. Okay. I don't have the bone structure for a okay. crew cut. I don't okay. Want to go to war. Okay. We'll do something about this. All right. It's very simple. All right. Okay. Why don't you write it down? Write. It. Okay. Okay. I'll write it down. Hello, ladies. <laughs> How are you? I just noticed you over here. You look a little chilly. You a little chilly? Yeah. Listen, my name's Herb. Herb Cohen. I'm kind of a uh, an important guy in rock and roll. Ah, oh, there's a few good reasons to be at the beach. Okay, now, the first thing you have to remember... Why aren't you writing? You should be writing. Uh -huh. The first thing that you have to remember is... These military idiots are not cops. They're soldiers. And the only people they can order around are other soldiers. It doesn't matter if the guy's a, a private or a general. If he tells you to sit down, you stand up. If he tells you to turn right, you turn left. It, it drives the officers crazy, believe me. And there's nothing they can do about it. They can beat the crap out of me. Uh, they mean nothing to you. Two. You ready? Okay, yeah. 
failure exams. Huh? The exams, they give you these little tests at the draft board. You know, little simple tests like how to identify shapes. Don't do it. Don't take the tests? No, take the tests. You have to take the tests. Don't pass the tests. Don't pass the tests. Try to avoid the physical exam. It is a hassle. It's humiliating, and unless you got a heart murmur or you get turned on from all the anal probing... Nah, no anal probe. By the time they get to the turn your head and cough shit, it's too late. You're on a plane. Damn, huh? You got any drugs? Here? She's not here, moron. You know, you just might fail this test without my help. It's funny. This is my life that we're talking about. Okay. If you have drugs, take them. Drugs? If you feel like taking a shower, don't. No shower? If your body craves rest, deny it. No sleep. Be loud and offensive and smelly and antisocial. Sounds like my manager. So we stayed awake for the next three days straight, following Cousin Herb's sage advice. Right, we're wasting valuable time here. Not nearly high enough. I mean, we've smoked drank and snorted everything in the room and I swear to God that I'm so messed up I'm actually back to normal <laughs> well then I think we better start over hey babe can you roll us something oh my head you babe mm. summer times here kitties and it's time to take a trip to take a trip <laughs> this world's so bad you feel so yeah, sad man. followed Cousin Herb's instructions to the letter. We were completely wasted, smelly, and totally disgusting. In other words, we were ready for our interview with the United States Armed Forces. We're going to the house of the butterflies. Look what the monarchs say. We would be so angry. Where will all the butterflies go with all these men? I don't know. Goodbye, butterflies. Good luck. See ya. All right, men, take your test books out and write your name on the top of page one. Do we have a problem, Dorothy? Me, sir? Did you call me, sir? Sir? Did you call me, sir? Did you call me, sir? I am a sergeant. That is not an officer's rank. Uh, which one of these is not a food? Now, this test was written for idiots. <laughs> So if you got here under your own steam, chances are excellent you're officer material. Which one of these is not wrong? Fellas, I'm not going to lie to you. Uncle Sam needs men. <clears throat> and God help me, you people fit loosely into that category. <clears throat> hey, hey, do we have a problem, Dorothy? <laughs> Wake up, boss! Stand up! 
Are you on drugs, son? <laughs> you smell like a latrine, boy. Stick your hand out. Out. You're shaking like a leaf. Touch your toes, son. Your toes, not your nose. Stand up. You know why you can't touch your toes? Well, Because you can't see your toes. You wouldn't know your toes if you were making love to them. Now sit down and take that test. Sit. What? Sit. Sit. <laughs> Kaylin. I want the chart. That's great. Take a seat. Take the seat. Take where would you want me to take it? That's no touching. Is there a draft in here? <laughs> Taking your clothes off. I can't get undressed in here, Doc. Not with all these men around. I don't want them to see me naked. But this is the army, son. We're all <laughs> men here. I just don't want them to see me naked. I don't mind if you see me naked. We could go down to one of the private rooms over there, and I would take my clothes off for you. In fact, you could do whatever you wanted. <laughs> Ship. Another one. All right, sister. Down the hall to the stairway. Follow the red line. The red line? Yeah, red. Like the moron tag around your neck. Kowalski! In the Navy, they eat steak, caviar, and whipped cream cake. They have fancy cooks who know what cooking means. In the army we get mess, and it really is a mess. All oh, the navy gets the gravy, but the army gets the beans, 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 beans. Send the salami, a boy in the army. What the Sam hell is going on in here? Guards! Guards! Get him out of here! Get, boy, get! You want some beans, or I'll give you beans? beans, 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 beans. This is very interesting. Under the category of drug use, you checked yes, but then you crossed it out. I can see right now that your eyes are dilated, and I'm going to ask you a question. Are you high on a drug right now? No, oh, man, I, I don't get high anymore. You don't do drugs anymore? Sure, I, I used to get high. I used to get really high. <laughs> really, really high. <laughs> but I find I don't need that anymore. You know, I found that I can just sort of slip in and out of that acid feeling anytime I want. It's really great, man. It saves me a ton of bread. You should try it. All right, run down the rows and tell me which way the E's are pointing. Um, the, the, the what? The E's. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see any E's. <laughs> uh, no. What do you see? Uh, W woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoth. Yeah, yeah, the prehistoric creature that um, that once roamed this very place. I don't understand. How did you get through life without glasses? My parents just didn't buy me glasses. You know, chicks don't make passes at guys that wear glasses. You know. I want to ask you right here about this entry. Um, once again, you you checked it and then you crossed it out and then you checked it and then you crossed it out and then. You you wrote attempted suicide. Do you want to talk to me about that? No, that's a mistake, man. I never meant to commit suicide. You know, sure, once or twice I woke up, found myself walking into the ocean. You know, I, that was just the acid thing again, you know? You know, I want to live, man. I want to live. I want to do the part for my country. I want to go out there. I want to hold that gun, you know? And, and I want to load the bullets in the gun. And I want to go and, and I want to... I want to hold the gun and feel the gun, and I want to feel it go off when I shoot like civilians, man. What did you say? You heard me, man. I want to kill women and children, all of them, man. They got to die. 
I, I, I don't get to kill people. No, you don't. You get to go home. Need it. You stink, mister. Oh, oh. Get out of my office. There's no more dinosaurs. Out! Okay. Just get out. It worked. Mark and I were considered degenerates, unfit for service. It was the best day of my life. Really? Yeah, this is exactly what we needed after a four-hour car ride. Yeah, not to mention the two shows in Ithaca. Hey, Jim, what time you got, man? I got two on Hey, Bill, when's our flight? Hey, Bill, when are we flying? Can, can you hear me? Never mind, Jim. Obviously, the old man's too cheap to buy a new battery to the hearing aids. I hear everything, Johnny. Yeah, Bill, you know, I don't understand why we still have to play crap houses at, like, Ithaca. I already explained to you those dates were booked before Happy Together came out. What are you complaining about? You got paid, didn't you? Cold, hard American cash. A little pocket money's gonna come in mighty handy over in England. So, Bill, when does our flight leave? Uh, you can board 45 minutes before takeoff, I know that. You've got a bunch of forms to fill out, Bill, to go through a lot of... when's the damn plane? 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 o'clock? Are you kidding? What are we supposed to do until then? I mean, do you have any idea how tired everybody is? Really, Bill, nobody told us we we're gonna have to wait six hours. Nobody asked me. Look, you guys wanted show business? You got show business. This airport stuff, it's all part of the deal. Look at Al over there. He's got the right idea. Besides, the human body adapts. You may not think that you're tired enough to sleep on the floor, but Whoa. studies have proven. What am I supposed to tell my fiance? Oh, I know we only have a few hours left, honey, but it's okay because my cheap manager says it's okay for us to sleep on the floor. You know, Bill, I saw a few motels on the way into this place. Maybe Listen to go. me. No, nine, yet. Do you have any idea how much these motels cost around here? There's absolutely no way I'm the manager, case closed. Okay? You, know, you know, Bill, this is a new level of cheap, even for you. Cheap, perhaps, but not thoughtless. There you go. I nabbed these from the hotel in Utica. I think they're goose down, kind of nice, huh? Yeah, I'm impressed. There you go. In the meantime, I suggest that you get a little sleep, okay? You boys look like hammered shit. All right. This is not a good sign. Air India to Calcutta, with a stopover in London, was the nightmare that our cheapskate manager had booked for us. The air conditioner leaked like a faucet, food was inedible, and believe it or not, each passenger was allowed one item of carry-on poultry. We hadn't slept a wink the night before. And to top it off, I was nervous. I had no idea how we were going to go over in London. I was about to be judged by a jury of my peers. But check that. Real English rock stars. I'm sorry, lady. Did you ever think that you would hear those words? Number one. <laughs> I mean, just think about how many people are listening to our record right now. We could be laughed out of England. Or hey, what if no one in London shows up at all? I mean, what, what if we're not such a big deal? Well, we'd end up just another bunch of one-hit wonders. Too late, Al. We're already four-hit wonders. That's right. At least in America, anyway. We're top ten. I mean, I bet you anything, John and Paul have already heard me sing, man. <laughs> I bet you even Ringo's heard me play me drum set. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> yeah. That's right, we'll always be remembered as the band that knocked Penny Lane out of number one. <laughs> you hear that, you curry suckers? We're the turtles, man. We're bigger than the goddamn Beatles.
After a flight like that, London felt like another planet. The ride in from the airport was surreal. The old narrow streets were bustling with electricity. London was swinging like a pendulum, dude. Hey, this was it. London, the grooviest city in the world, and I was going to join the party. Of course, the hotel our managers booked us into wasn't exactly the Ritz, but at least it didn't smell like curry, and the bellboy was a Turtles fan. Things were looking up. You don't say. Yes, it is Graham Nash from the home. Well, thank you very much. London, baby. Last year on tour, we met Graham Nash in the Hollies and really hit it off. Well, it turns out that Donovan was over at his pad and they invited us to hang out. Hell, we didn't even have time to change our clothes. So how do you boys like London so far? Are you kidding? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I've been off the plane for two hours and we're hanging out with Graham Nash and Donovan. <laughs> I'm losing it, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. I mean, we're getting high with real legends. <laughs> uh, give me a break. What? You're a hit, man. I mean, you're the bloody turtles. Happy together, huh? I mean, I've got all your albums. Everybody does. I don't think that I do, actually. Bullshit, man. What does a big famous English dude like you care about this faceless little guitar nothing from California? Well, you've been called America's Hollies. There must be something in that, eh? <laughs> yeah, and what's that mean? That you don't write your own songs either? We do, actually. You know, there's a lot more to being in a hit band than just writing your own songs, you know? <laughs> oh, is that so? Yeah. What about you, Buddha boy? You write your own, don't you? I write my own, I roll my own. I am my own shadow and its worst enemy. I've learned not to wear clothes, but love. I sit naked in a sea of love. I, I do that. I do that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I am right. So, Graham, you know the Beatles, right? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Tape, won't you? Oh, <laughs> so do you know him or what? <laughs> Get comfy, lads. Your dear old cousin Graham's about to take you on a very magical trip. It's gonna blow your mind. Oh man, this is like this is the new Holly's album, huh? Oh man, this is cool. This is totally cool. Gents, may I present Sergeant Pepper's? Lonely Hearts Club Band. No way. <laughs> no way. Boom, that's the new Beatles album, man. That's not even out yet. Where'd you get that? It's an advanced copy, given to me by Mr. George Harrison himself. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you are among the first to hear it, so be good little turtles. Settle down. <laughs> Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was the most anticipated album in years, and we were listening to it before its release. Okay, only a day before, but we didn't know that. We felt like we had been admitted to the most exclusive club on earth. The Beatles were at the center of a new age. No one really understood what it all meant, but we were young and innocent, and anything seemed possible. We felt ourselves connected to something truly new and wonderful, something more than just another great pop record. Like a glorious new future in the reach of our entire generation. That was the magic of Sgt. Pepper's. Absolutely, positively, without a doubt, the greatest record ever made. 
I can't believe we were around at the same time as those guys. They're gods. They are living gods. Wow, man. That was one hell of a groovy ride, man. <laughs> you cannot tell me that those guys weren't high, man. I mean, those guys were high, am I right? <laughs> I swear, if I ever met those guys, I would die a happy man. Tuckle me, old son. I hope your life insurance is paid up. I feel like getting me a pint. Any of your boys could have joined me? Yes, yes, yes. So, Don, <clears throat> you coming, son? Uh, no thanks, lads. I think I'll stay here to meditate. But have fun, boys. And for God's sakes, stay away from Lennon. I think he said stay away from Lennon. He might have said stay away from Lemons. After all, it was Donovan. And we were pretty wasted. It must have been past midnight. Time seemed to stand still as we drove through the dark streets of London to the hippest club in town. The speakeasy. Watering hole for the biggest stars in Europe. There's a place I know where the cool kittens go. It's a place that the hippies found. Where you stomp and shout and knock yourself out. It's a place called the Coconut Lounge. So if your lads play your cards right, you might get the gig tonight. I hear Eric's in the house. Oh, Eric hey, Clapton's on. Eric Clapton. And then you let yourself go. John, what? you've got to face track eight. It's so monotone. But we have it out in the oboe yet. We've got the best oboe player in Manchester who's coming. It's an 80 year old. Just got to fix. Just the John. Nash. Got you doing sightseeing tours now. See the bus from Waterloo Station has just arrived. Justin John, these are the turtles from California. Boys, this is Justin and John, a little outfit called the Moody Blues. It's a little outfit for me. Wow, yeah, cool. Nice to meet you, fellas. I, 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 I gotta you. tell you guys, we, we are huge fans of yours, man. Are you guys still making records? Yeah. Actually, we're in the studio right now. We're working with a symphony orchestra and a psychedelic mind trip of vast theatrical and poetic proportion. I think you will be surprised where it will take your brain. Hey, man, as long as somebody else is paying, my brain will go anywhere. You know, I'm a cheap date, you know? <laughs> hey, let's say, what's, what's the name of this um, symphonic poetry rock thing anyway? Well, for now, we're calling it Days of Future Past. Uh, days of what? Future past. Oh yeah, yeah, that's catchy, man. That's that's real catchy. I, I dig that. Yeah. Like, wh hey, which one of you guys sings "Go Now"? Because I gotta tell you, that is one of the coolest songs of all time, man. Yeah, well, thanks. I guess. Actually, that bloke's name is Danny Lane, and he's no longer with the band. I I'm sorry. You know, I, I just assumed. You know, I I'm gonna go now. Um, if you guys see Denny, tell him I said hi. Okay. Oh, the guy's kidding. Damn foreigners. What's my name? Rio! Just in case you forgot. Oh, big smile. Right, Tom, left Tom. Yeah, we've got a little tutorial going here, George. Have you a question, ladies? Oh, good smile. Let's see the smile down below. Yeah, we've got some more of that. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Hey, John. Hey, there. What do you see down there, me son? I can't see anything down there. It's too bloody dark up inside this here hole. Here's a torch. Enjoy. Paul, for God's sake, why do you even bother dragging me to this awful place when it's absolutely clear that you don't even know that I'm a knife? Get out of here. I don't see me and you down here, Sony Jim. Well, I do get around to all the best places, you know. I don't know about that. Tom smells a bit busy to me. Well, then, pass the vinegar. Here's a stout fella. I swear to God, Paul, if you don't knock this shit off, I'm kicking the car and I'm going home. And I don't mean it on Give me some more. Wiggy. 
Which one's the real twig? If you lads are done gawking, you can come meet me mates. You're just the kings of the new revolution, aren't you? Well, guess what, Your Majesty? Your throne stands alone. James! Come back, baby! You know we've just been working too hard as all. James! Katie! Come back, baby! Listen, have yourself a great time with your idiot friend looking up bums all night for all I care. Miss Asher, J Jane, hi. I'm Jim Tucker with the Turtle. I played with your brother on tour and, uh... Yes, so <laughs> Look what fell off the uh, boat from America. Huh? Turtles. The apple cards. The Beatles, Beatles, Turtles. Oh, you don't look like bloody surfers to me. No. No, no, no. 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 You're too fat for one thing. Probably make a pretty decent float, though, wouldn't you, boy? Oh, easy on that one, Ringo. I think he's about to cry. Oh, yeah. hmm? What's it all about? Ringo, what's it all about, then? Oh, 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 this just in. George is all about. Oh, and he doesn't know what's it all about, then. Oh, oh, maybe the bloody turtles know. What's it all about, turtle? Mm -hmm. well, well, it's all about the music, I guess. Oh, yeah. 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 You may stay, then. I uh I just heard uh Sgt. Peppers and uh I must congratulate you on one of the most amazing albums ever made. The most amazing album ever made. What it costs is like twenty five thousand pounds. It's like a lot, right? Oh, yes, indeed, Jim. It would be like a lot. I mean, I don't know. I'm in awe. And I really feel like I should congratulate you guys on like behalf of the whole world because you have made the greatest album of all time. Thanks, mate. <laughs> John? John? I think he's out. Well, you know. <laughs> hey, wake up. Lad's talking to you. Oh, was I saying something, something brilliant? Yeah, nothing could foul. <laughs> so you're the singer then, are you? That would be me. Yeah. Good chops, mate. Nice singing on that single. Wow, well, thank you. Mm. I'm complaining. Still, it is a bit fruity, isn't it? Excuse me? Well, I mean, like, invested down. You know, I mean, that little cry in your voice. Tad innocent, that's a bit, uh, I don't know, light in the loafers. Oh, well, flower power crap. I'm just trying to be the American version of you. <laughs> Touche, mate. Well, that's not bloody likely, is it? Come on, John, leave them alone. Let's not have another confrontation. So tell me, have you had any uh, vocal training? No. I wanted to do some rock and roll singing, so I uh, just did, you know, a little clubbing here and there. What sort of uh, club singing did you do? Uh, I was mostly singing R&B stuff, you know. Barrett Strong, Money, uh, Justine. Justine? Uh, Don and Dewey? Oh, man, I love that record. Yeah, someday I'd like to do that song with my band. Hey, hey, what do you say, lads? Are we back on the clock, then? Sure. Justine, Justine, I'll give you just don't treat me right. Justine, 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 I'll give you just don't treat me right. You like to ball in the morning and stay out late at night. Well, I'm going to the barber shop, gonna have them do me up, gonna get clean for my little mother cook. Justine, 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 Justine. She my loving baby, and you know she got me wild. She's a mama's, papa's, sister's, brother's, uncle's crazy child. What do you think of that, George? I don't think I react, you know that, Jones. So what's your reaction to that bargain basement Connor B Street reject over there? Ooh, that's Tucko, he's our rhythm guitarist. Well, somebody ought to tell him it's 1967. Those suits are way out, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Guys like him give us rhythm players a bad name. <laughs> hey, you turtle! Send me a haircut. Oh, it's bleeding awful. Did you ask your barber for a Beatles job? I just wanted to say it's, it's a nice meeting. Your name's Tucko, isn't it? Choco, schmoco. 
Well, I could have quite a lot of fun with that name. Don't do it, John. I'm begging you. Oh, come on, George. Well, let's sing our own song, then. There is a lad named Tucko. Oh, he's such a lovely fellow. Oh, come out of your shell, you bloody turtle hell. A little lad named Tucko. And he... John, please. Very clever. You can take it, can't you, Tucko? What's that? Oh, you're a stuttering turtle? Can you take it, lad? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he says. Like he's afraid of his abusive da. Oh, is that it, Tucko? You got a distaste for the leather a little too much early on in life. Yes, sir. No, sir. Can I take a dump, sir? Mm. I don't understand what your problem is. You don't understand. Well, you're right. Put a phone out, yeah. I can't believe you guys. You're supposed to be the Beatles. Man. Poor little imitation be at all. <laughs> Well, why don't you go tell it to Choke Berry? Because he's the only American who still knows how to rock. You're unbelievable. I wish I never met you. You never did, lad. You never did. Screw you guys. Hey, Tucko! Tucko! Come back, man! And there they go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely truffles from Solid California. Cheers. See you around. <laughs> Disaster. The greatest moment of my young life, and it exploded in my face. I was stoned, miserable, and alone. I couldn't go back to the Beatles table. I didn't want to go back to the hotel. But like I said, this was a magical time. Uh, might I please have your autograph? Sure, man. Who do I make it out to? I suppose Brian would be fine. So why are you dressed like Brian Jones? No, I'm dressed like Brian Jones because I am Brian Jones. Sure, sure. <laughs> you, you are Brian Jones. Oh my, oh my, you're Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones. Oh my God, well, of, of, of course you are. We're in England, right? Brian Jones just asked me for his autograph. The Rolling Stones. Brilliant. <laughs> You must have me confused to somebody else, Mr. Jones. I don't think so, mate. You're Howard Kalen. I'm a huge Turtles fan. Hell, Wyman and I, we saw you guys play at the phone booth in New York. You were great. Really great. I want to tell you, I totally dig it. Wow. Brian Jones and the Rolling Stones is asking for my autograph. I, I'm sorry, it's just, it's surreal. <laughs> what are you <laughs> talking about? I love the entire California thing, man. You, know, you guys, the mamas and the papas, the birds. Turtles get the best harmony in the business, ain't that right, Jimmy? Allow me to do the honors. Legendary Howard Kalen of the Turtles, may I introduce Jimi Hendrix of the Jimi Hendrix Experience. So you're Jimi Hendrix. You know, I just wanted to say that I gotta agree with Brian. I mean, you are one hell of a single baby. Well, gentlemen, what do you say we continue this soiree in the comfort of the restaurant? Yeah, I... I... I would be on it. Pardon me, chaps. Excuse me. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys. After you. After you. <laughs> I noticed you brought some of your famous friends tonight. You know how much I love her famous friends. Um, Shirley, wasn't it? Sally, you didn't have a problem with my name last weekend. <laughs> that's because I called you my little crumpet, didn't I? Now that's my bride. I knew you wouldn't forget. <laughs> I call them all crumpet. Saves for a lot of embarrassment. So, uh, you got a seat for my mates, then? I think I can squeeze you in somewhere. <laughs> Brian. 
Ooh. Make a little room for Brian. Hey man, I think Brian's gonna do his own thing, dude. <laughs> I was thinking that maybe later on, you and I could get together for a private party. My place. Hmm. Actually, I was sort of hoping Nick or Keith might come by. I could talk to some real stars. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Once you've been Jones, you never go back. You told me yourself. Brian, I'm sorry. I've got to meet two girlfriends. Brenda and Cindy. Look. Oh. oh, that's all right. You can bring them along. Maybe we can all have a little bash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. Why not? Exactly. Why not? Not your usual, Jimmy. Absolute freaking loot me, baby. And your friend? <laughs> uh, well, I guess you I'll... You have the same, right? <laughs> yeah, the same, right? Right. <laughs> so... So... Where are you from? From L.A. How about you? Seattle, Washington. Born Hendrix. James Marshall, thank you very much. But I used to gig around the States as Jimmy James. Your usual Jimmy. Yeah, you probably needed to avoid the draft, me too. Hell no. I was in the damn army. Get out. I kid you not. Paratrooper. Got injured. Picked up my guitar and decided to earn a living for a change. It's crazy, man. The army, you know, I can never do that. Let me tell you something. It taught me a lot of lessons. Everything happens for a reason. So how are things on the left coast? Groovy, man. It's been an amazing summer. <laughs> I can dig it, brother. And this is a summer of love. That's what the newspapers are called. I mean, look around you, you know. <laughs> we are young and alive and in London, freaking England. <laughs> Out of gum. That's gonna be me as soon right. as my flavor runs out. Here you go, ugly Americans. Drink up. And don't cause a row around it to me. <laughs> now, what can I get you boys to eat? I'll have a number nine if that's okay with you, Foxy Lady. You can have anything you like, Jimmy. What about your mate, then? Well, I think you'll have a number nine as well. Yeah. And another round, please. Number nine to taste. <laughs> to new friends. To new friends. Oh, what the hell is that, man? Scotch and Coke. All the local cats are drinking. When in Rome, you did. Yeah, when in Rome, right. Here's the Howard's happy night. So how'd you start out in this game? Starting a band called The Crossfires. Playing surf music. <laughs> That is like Dick Dale. Whoa, you're kidding, right? Dick Dale is like one of my idols, man. He plays his guitar upside down like me. You play guitar upside down? Man, what a gimmick. Gimmick my ass. I just learned it that way. Dig, I take a regular right-handed guitar, but I restring it. That's how I make those magic sounds, <laughs> dig. <laughs> magic sound? Oh, yeah, you haven't heard the album yet, have you? Jimmy. Oh, it was some cool dudes back in the States. Hi, <laughs> you know Ike Turner? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know Ike, but I've seen him. You know, you know the Osley brothers? Joey D? Wilson Pickett? How about Little Richard? Yeah, I actually do know Little Richard. Can't believe what that little poof wanted to pay me. And said I was still in his moves, too. So I started my own band. And we were good, too. Big, real good, but nobody cared. You know, there's only two kinds of music in this world. There's good music and there's bad music, and that's all. There's a lot of truth to what you say. Alright, two number nines, extra chips. There you go, enjoy the Dare I ask what we're about to eat? Oh, we can I just say at this juncture man, that you are among the whitest dudes that I've ever seen? And dig, we're in London, England. 
And the green stuff would be? That's spinach. It's only an omelet, man. Eggs and cheese and mushrooms. Hell, now you eat up now, son. <laughs> Make your mama proud. I'm not usually much of a spinach here, man. This is like creamy or something. All right, another round in the house. <laughs> can I get a little vinegar, baby? Of course you can. If you are a very good little girl. Vinegar? What is that, code for something? No, man, I mean vinegar. Put it on my chips. You want some for yours? My what? Your chips, man. I, I have chips? You have chips and he has chips. You both have chips. We, we both have fries. Oh, chips, man. And chips are crisp. Whoa. Crisps is chips and chips is fries. And the vinegar? Is for the fries. <laughs> the chips, man. man. You know, maybe it's best if you don't try to take in too much at once, you know? <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> Do you have any ketchup? So, uh, how'd you end up here? My gig for years, working my ass off on the Chitlin circuit. I had to go to New York before anybody even knew I existed. In Greenwich Village. I started working these clubs up and down Bleecker, and, and one night I meet this dude from the animals. Eric Burton. I know him. No, we... not Burton. This other cat, Chaz Chandler. And we used to do some gigs with them. We did one in Hammond, Indiana. Right, yeah, so this Chandler flies me over here last year and we put this band together with guys I never met before. Blam, you know. I'm an overnight sensation on a little island 8,000 miles away from my own home. <laughs> Dig it. Life is bizarre, you know. My manager in the press have turned me into something else. That's all right, man. You are something else. Say, man, you got something on your face there. Oh, man. That's what you do, <laughs> It's cool. Hell, you're probably quite the ladies' man, am I right? No. I am getting married as soon as we get back to the States. Steady, my man. That's a real big deal. How long have you known your future ball and chain? About a year and a half. She was a dancer. You know, we've been doing most of the telephone thing, you know? When we met her, she was a virgin. And... Oh, it's cool, my man. <laughs> More than I needed to know. But believe me, that girl's dancing days are over. Man, you are so doomed. Listen, man. Don't do it. This is not the time. This is hit record time. Make hay while the sun shines, you know? How about you? You got any chicks? One chick, two chicks. I got me three or four hundred chicks. That's the name of the game. Those record company guys and those agents, they can take your money. Hell, they can even take your pride unless you refuse to bend over. But they can never take away all those beautiful women out there. <laughs> That's the reason you're singing I'm a guitar player. And if you say any different, you're either lying, dead, or queer. Hey, man, in case I do wind up with a hit record in L.A., why don't you let me get the address to that J.C. Penney's where you shop at so I can pick up an outfit as cool as yours? What? Ah, well, I do hope you'll forgive me, man, but you look like a damn door-to-door -door salesman. And not a very successful one at that. You know, I used to wear mohair suits till this guy named Robert Allbag fixed me up with a whole new look. Reinvent yourself. There's all sorts of ways to go. Scars, lace shirts, velvet pants. You know, flash yourself up a bit, brother. Live a little while you're here. Splurge. You know? I don't know if we could use that much reinventing. I'll tell you what I see. I see you all done up like John Steed on the Avengers, dig. You know, kind of fancy. Maybe a derby hat or a cane. That could be one hell of an image for you. Think about it. Another round, Jen. No more, thank you. Keep them coming, Zoomy. <laughs> so like, where were we? Oh yeah, I really dig your music, man. I mean, dig it. Vocals, man. I mean, I can't sing with the damn. You know, I know that. And so I play. And I play music that it sounds like their war. All I'm trying to do is to get my guitar to sing the way I wish I could get my voice to do. You're a lucky man, Howard. Don't be selling yourself short. Hell, guys like Brian Jones, he'd sell his soul to have a voice like yours. Does Brian have soul? We each have exactly the correct amount of soul that we need. See, that's what I'm trying to say with all you experienced. 
all a person has to do is to reach out and learn to welcome the new experiences, you know, try the new stuff, get off the couch. Hell, when you can connect with the current that's already flowing through the air, that's your fucking soul right there. <laughs> you know, anything is possible with the power of soul. So are you saying that I have soul? Most definitely. I mean, it's the whitest soul that I've ever heard, but it's there. You may have talent and even that elusive soul, but again, ask the musical question. Are you experienced? <laughs> I guess not. Because I'm thinking that an experienced person would make the room stop spinning them right about now. Gentlemen, compliments of the house. No more, thank you. Don't you listen to him. Keep him coming, baby. <laughs> To two Yanks in London getting shit faced and not giving a rat's ass. And to having the number one record. And to having the number one record. <laughs> record. Say, brother, what's it like to be famous anyway? Oh, man, you're messing with my head now. On the contrary, I'm dead serious. Look, we make our American debut in two weeks at the Monterey Pop Festival. And I'm scared out of my mind. You know, the crowds here in England, Germany, Holland, those are the only crowds I know lately. You know, and they totally dig us over here, which is totally cool, but they don't really know the scene. <laughs> so come on now, indulge me, tell me about Famous. I'm on television, and I'm on the radio, man. And there's nothing, but nothing can match the first experience when you hear your voice and your songs on the radio, man. I can dig it. It's just, it's just what? It's just, I don't know, you know? I don't know, you know? I, 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 I thought being number one would like change my life and put me over the top, you know? That, uh, that I could get, you know, that big house up on the hill and I could get that little German sports car and drive around. And uh, you know what? I got that house up on the hill and I got that, that little sports car, you know? But nothing's changed. I got more money, so I owe more money, you know? Like, no spiritual revelations. I'm a little closer to that inner truth I kept hearing so much about, man. You know, I'm just as confused as ever. Dig. You know, sometimes we actually have to go out and seek enlightenment. The spiritual knowledge that you talk about don't just come knocking at the door. It is up to each of us to, to at least get off our asses and seek the higher ground. <laughs> hey, man, I got just a thing for you on your quest for enlightenment. <laughs> a little dessert, perhaps? Oh, I don't know, Jimmy. I'm actually kind of fault. Hey, man, you know what they say. No, what do they say? There's always room for Jello. <laughs> is, is that cool, man? Suss it out, brother. Everybody in this place is higher than you and me will ever be. This is London, man, and we the rock is rude. <laughs> Damn, man, I love this country. <laughs> hey, to Mother England. <sighs> to Mother England, man. And God save the Queen. God save the Queen. <laughs> and God save the Queen. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can feel my face. Jimmy, what does that mean? <laughs> It means keep the joint going, man. I've only got a couple on and it's got to last the rest of the night. <laughs> See, and here's the thing. Outsiders, civilians, man, dick. Those people will never know that intense rush that we feel when we're on stage. You're so right. And they'll never know that <laughs> we're the damn audience and they're the show, man. I heard, I heard that. that. The way, the way I, I see it, it I'm on a mission. And I, I want to talk, talk to the world through my music. music. I, want I want them to know, know how I feel. feel. You know, when I play, I can, I can feel the crowd lift up off the ground. And the higher they get, the higher they make me, and the better I play. I want my music to reach the stars. I want it to last forever. Nothing lasts forever, man. Hey, a guy can dream, can he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hey, Jimmy, I wasn't kidding before, man. I think I really need to use the bathroom. That would be the Lou. The old WC. The Lou. Whatever it is, man. I don't know. Oh, I don't think I can make it. 
So that was my dinner with Jimmy. I don't know how I got back to my hotel room that night. I do remember canceling whatever it was I had to do the next day. I just stayed in my room and put ice on my head. Tucker flew home after England. Quit the band and never played guitar again. I guess the Beatles hadn't turned out to be the gods he expected. He wanted them to be flawless, bigger than life, so what he saw freaked him out. For me, it was the funniest thing. They were just regular guys. They weren't gods at all. In fact, they were just like us. Sergeant Pepper was released in England the very next day. I bought a record player and played the whole album again and again until the hotel manager made me promise to keep it down. Soon after that, we flew back to the U.S. It seemed that everything had changed somehow while we were gone, like we had entered the age of Aquarius, a brand new era of peace, love, and understanding. I even ended up marrying my girlfriend Mary, even though I never forgave her for cutting her long, beautiful hair. Go figure. I also bought Jimmy's record. Are you experienced? It changed my entire life. I guess it changed the entire world. Sometimes I smile to myself, knowing that for at least one brief moment in time, I made one of history's most colorful figures just a little more colorful. Jimmy, if you can hear me, I owe you more than just a brand new velvet suit. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. We did play one more sold-out show at the Speakeasy before we left London, and this time we were the happening. Write a movie about us someday. I hope not. Yeah, because you look like a prick. <laughs> Like you always do Till the blue sky 
Don't leave yet. Here's another clue for you all. We were going to title the new album One Down and Six to Go because it was the first album of our new seven album deal with EMI, but I think Sergeant Pepper will work out just fine. Don't you, Polly? Uh, it should, I thought of it, John. You know. I know. I know you know. You know I know you know. Hey, Luigi, have a cuddle with crumbs. You know, sometimes I'll rent a 16mm film projector and we'll watch movies and stuff. You know, like The Wizard of Oz. I mean, man, that can be a real trip. Ringo, watch Jason and the Argonauts over and over. We want to be the first fat group to be popular in your country of thin people. <laughs> you see, mate, the record companies book their flights on Air India because that's one way they can get the money out of India, you see? Out, in, in, out. Mark and I, we sing the trombones. Al and Jim, they sing the uh, trumpets. We arrange our voices like an orchestra. Hey, you fancy another round of Monopoly later? You want to have one of my people take you down to Carnaby Street at the usual spot. I was Lord Kitchener's valet. Granny takes a trip. Clash you up a bit, brother. Dash and what else? Hash doesn't burn like that, man. It does. It's <laughs> mixed with uh, tobacco. That's the way they do it over here. It's like dirt. You know what John said to me? He said, hey, that's a nice suit. Do they make it in your size? What's going on with that new Beatles movie, eh? It's actually Paul's movie. He calls it Magical Mystery Tour. I mean, frankly, I'm not much hope for it. It's, it's, it's like a home movie. Yeah, but I've got a featured part in it, so naturally I'm quite excited about it. Yeah. Actually, I'm thinking about taking up acting full time. A career on the silver screen. Yeah, sure, Richie. Oh, uh, and then there's the cartoon. Oh, like a Saturday morning kitty show. No, no, it's a movie. You know, it's different. You know, it's psychedelic. It's called Yellow Submarine. You get to sing. Well, yeah, of course, I mean, it's called Yellow Submarine, isn't it? We've confused the fringe that has to pinpoint a bag in order to understand what's happening. These finger poppers sit around until someone real bright like a critic or a music major says so-and-so has a new sound, a new thing, a new, a new way of getting into your head or something. Other people pick up the stream and suddenly zap! You're classified perforated, like one of those computer cards that comes up with the same answer every time someone pushes the button on the big dumb machine. Big. We the rockers rule. 